The Yu-Gi-Oh! August 31st ban list is finally here. And today, big dog, we are going to be breaking down every single card on the ban list and what does it mean for the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's go ahead and jump on in. What's going on with ya, big dog? And it is an amazing day for Yu-Gi-Oh! I hope that your day phenomenal but if it isn't don't let what happened at the beginning of your day ruin the rest of your day and this point in time it is going to be the ban list if you guys just want to know what the ban list is i will leave all the information down below in the description but holy this is a crazy ban list that we have a lot to talk about just showing you guys what would be happening in case you want to skip frames and you don't want to hear the thoughts and everything in between guys so we have four cards that are banned and there are quite a few things that i got right on my prediction list a couple of things that i may have to fine tune for the next one the first of the four forbidden cards is going to be fiend smith rakrama this card did come out in infinite forbidden so just recently the last major set and a lot of players would think that this was a card that wouldn't get banned because it's too new but there is a couple of problems with Fiend Smith Lacrima, and I think one of its biggest problems is its burn effect. Being able to dictate the game for so long if you were playing a deck like Fiend Smith Snake Eyes, and then at the end of game one or game two, whenever it comes to time, being able to burn for that 1200 damage is critical. And I think that's the biggest reason why this card has become banned. Now, there is a couple of other cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that are similar like Sword Soul Long Yuan being able to burn from uh, 1200, but they aren't as accessible as just being able to have Light Fiend monsters to fusion summon into your Lacrima. As you guys already know, well, let me go ahead and show you what Lacrima looks like and everything. It's a really good card. Um, another card that's being banned is Opelousa Bull of the Goddess, and this was a card that we did predict correctly. Now, I don't think that there's many problems with Opelousa herself. Her being or having the ability to be able to negate a monster effect and only being able to negate a monster effect by reducing its attack by 800 and only being able to use her effect once per chain does balance her out tremendously. But I think one of the biggest problems with Opelousa and why she winds up on this ban list is because first of all, this card is incredibly generic, but more importantly, how Opelousa functions in current day Yu-Gi-Oh is that it would just be to debtor hand traps or card effects from interacting with your board. So not necessarily a big, huge in-piece card, um, though it is often an in-piece card if you don't have interruptions to stop it, but a card that can prevent your opponent from stopping you and allowing you to combo. So that's one of the biggest reasons why this card does get hit to the ban list. And unfortunately, I know a lot of rogue players that hate that this card is on the list, but to be honest, the way that Yu-Gi-Oh! Power Creep has been happening, those generic cards are probably going to have to go at least for a little while. Beatrice, Lady of the Eternal, is a bannable Yu-Gi-Oh card and is finally banned. Unfortunately, I genuinely like Beatrice, but having a monster that can send cards from the deck to the graveyard during either turn created all types of situations where you can search cards that would be uh, it, it, entirely detrimental to your opponent. Like being able to search cards like different dimension ground and stuff like that was very, very popular. And Beatrice itself, being able to make Fiendsmith a one card combo for your deck without committing your normal summon was a little bit ridiculous. So I actually do agree. And Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity, we did not expect this card to get banned because Konami never hits problematic cards. But definitely, definitely a card that did deserve to be banned because of the uh, Synchro deck. I forget the Synchro deck's name. <laughs> Centurion being able to summon this on your opponent's turn and stop all of your opponent's monsters effects. So overall, I think that these are healthy hits for the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. If we're going to continue to go towards uh, one card combos and turns taking a little bit longer, moving on to the limited, there is so many cards on here and I have to know did this ruin your deck? I like the random branded fusion limit was definitely one that caught me off guard. Um, there's a couple of other things that grass looks greener off of the ban list. Uh, not necessarily a ridiculous card, but now that 60 card Paleozoic deck becomes more and more uh, viable for a lot of players. Skill Drain, uh, Poplar Ash. There are so many cards that we have to talk about here. Let's go ahead and start off with Eva. And I think I have something for it. That's Poplar, that's Lacrima. Let me go ahead and 
exit these down because oh my god there are so many cool cards that we have to talk about so eva went into the graveyard allows you to banish two other light fairies and add the same number of light fairies from your deck to your hand this was really powerful in a uh, drytron or fairy decks because it allows you to search herald of orange light now i'm not saying that drytron or fairy decks are not powerful but i think this is one of those cards that has been banned because Yu-Gi-Oh! it was a little bit too far ahead of its time and it coming off the ban list to one is definitely a step in the correct direction since we've had so much power creep snake eyes poplar in ash to one is is kind of that i don't know what to say about that because we know for a fact that limiting both snake eyes poplar and ash is good kind of when we get new cards as amina cards snake eyes still becomes an incredibly powerful deck so does this do enough to stop snake eyes no but does it do enough to slow it down so other decks can compete? Well, I, I want you guys to let me know down below in the comment section if that's something that, if that does that to be able to compete. I love that they banned or they limited number 40 gimmick puppet of strings and number C40 gimmick puppet of dark strings. We actually did talk about this card being hit um, in our, and not a prediction list, but it was a perfect ban list. And I wholeheartedly agree with this. Uh, having FTKs or strategies that can, uh finish the game incredibly quickly is not the move uh you know nobody wants to sit down and watch somebody play with themselves for approximately 20 minutes just to go to the next game so hitting these doesn't necessarily kill gimmick puppet but it does kill the ftk which i think is a step in the right direction hopefully we have branded fusion limited again i think this was one of the most random ones and and this is one of those cards that uh, we didn't have Albion Sanctifier Dragon Band or Gimmick Puppet Nightmare. So something in Branded maybe had to go, but was it worth hitting Branded Fusion? A card um, that is really good for Branded decks or, or, or uh, the Albaz Despia deck. But is it really worth it at this point in time in the game? Let me know what you guys, I know Branded players are in shambles. Branded Fusion 1 has been in Master Duel, so I think you guys will adapt. But Branded Fusion 1 was definitely the most random. We have opening of the spirit gates and pot of prosperity now actually in my prediction list i went a little bit harder and i hit the um the the level two guy dark beckoning beast but if you guys want to look at opening of the spirit gates either one of those hits are very much appropriate to being able to stop you bell uh basically what this does is when this card is activated it had dark beckoning beast to your hand you could just kind of ignore it saying guria haman and raviel it adds dark beckoning beast but its hidden effects is what makes this card so good. Being able to special summon a fiend with zero attack and defense from your graveyard. Then also, so if you control a level 10 monster, which Ubel controls tons of those, being able to add a continuous spell card from your graveyard to your hand is crazy good. This and Dark Beckoning Beast is what makes Ubel so uh, immune to hand traps. So being able to hit these cards and bring down the volatility of the deck a little bit more, I think is great. Pot of Prosperity, we did have it on the ban list. We predicted this one correct, though we did say limited or semi-limited because we wanted to follow a natural order of progression. But Pot of Prosperity is actually one of those hits that feels really good and bad at the same time. Uh, there are a ton of Yu-Gi-Oh! strategies that need consistency, just outright lack consistency in any way, shape, or so in form. So having Pot of Prosperity made those decks ultra competitive. But at the same time, Pot of Prosperity was used to be able to search those one ofs the cards like rivalry of the warlords uh goes in match skill drain stuff like that which fortunately skill drain is now joining the other floodgates on the list um so it's really interesting to have pot of prosperity on this list because of that so it, it's almost like you win with pot of prosperity and you also lose with this card saying and summoning another card that we had on our prediction list is going to limit it this time this is going to hurt um the tenpai dragon players the most but they'll be fine losing four copies of your searchable very very searchable deck only makes pocky drago a little bit more viable and makes the deck uh you know a little less powerful a card that is coming off we've already talked about that that grass is greener oops this card is one of the most ridiculous cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. And the reason why is because it challenges deck building for Yu-Gi-Oh. So if I play a 60 card deck and you play a 40 card deck, when we start the game, if I can get this card to my hand, I can send the top 20 cards from my deck to the graveyard. There's a lot of pile decks that are pretty successful implementing that grass looks greener. And they are really, really powerful decks, sometimes even annoying decks. If you guys play Master Duel, there is a Paleozoic deck 
that loves this particular card and it thrives off of it. And now I think it has all of the, the potential and materials to be an incredible deck. But if you look at it, some other strategies that are really hopeful for the TCG that Master Duel doesn't have, Infernoid is one that just came to mind that got support from the last uh, Battles of Legends set that could be incredibly good as well. So I I'm not sure if I like that grass or if I don't, but it's one of those things where I want to be optimistic about. So that's it for the band and the limited. Now we're going to pretty much go to cards that are being getting semi-limited and unlimited. And that's going to be all of the dragon rulers. We predicted that they would come to three. Coming to two is a natural order of progression. Pretty much expects that. I don't think that the dragon rulers will have any impact whatsoever, but it's really cool to see that we can now somewhat play dragon rulers a little bit more. Hopefully around the next ban list, we get them all the three so we can see a full power dragon ruler deck. Let me know what you think about that. Luna Light Tiger is a really, really good card for a lot of Beast Warrior or Pendulum combo decks. Let's see if I can go ahead and pull it up. The reason why this card was limited initially is because you can keep reusing this card's effect over and over again. Once per turn, you can target one Luna Light Monster in your graveyard, special summon it. So if you can return it to your hand with cards like Blackwing, Zephros, and stuff like that, you can keep reusing Luna Light Tiger to almost infinitely summon monsters. But being able to summon an infinite amount of monsters is something that most competitive decks can do now. So this card requiring a little bit more work, uh, as well as only being able to summon Luna Lights, it, I could see it. I could see it coming off of the list. We have Thunder Dragon Colossus coming in too, which I think is a mistake because more Thunder Dragon Colossus means that Thunder Dragon is the best deck in Yu-Gi-Oh. Can't wait to build that deck. Thunder Dragon Bist Steals is on top of the world. And Ib World Challenge Justicia is a card that people thought were gonna be really was gonna be really good. Fell completely off the map. Now on for unlimited Armageddon Knight. Holy crap, Th Thunder Dragon just might genuinely be. I might I might have to start cooking with that right now. Armageddon Knight completely off the ban list. Really good. Red Rose Dragon. Um, card that probably shouldn't be on the ban list once Hockla Fibers got banned. Magic Specter Kieran, we've already predicted this. The um database updated plush fire uh to follow its errata expect this card to be reprinted in the bonanza set guys um the errata of this card says if a phase up a four mage monster you control is destroyed about our card effect you can special this card from your pendulum zone and then it says if this card is destroyed about our card effect you can special one for four mage monster from your hand or deck you can only use this effect of plush fire once per turn to be honest i don't think it needed an errata the card is so old and not good enough it just, it, it didn't feel like it was one of those. But time seal off the ban list. Skipping your opponent's draw phase seems like a really, really good card. But in actuality, not so much of a great card. Let me know what you guys think about this ban list. Did this just save Yu-Gi-Oh? Me personally, I can't wait to get into the lab and give you the strategies that I think are going to be amazing. Of course, if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and consider following me because your boy needs your follows. And more importantly, hit that notification bell so you can stay updated on content. I can't wait to see you on the next videos.